Welcome to this introductory video to wire locking. We're going to look at a few examples and why we safety wire things in aviation. This is a turbo pressure controller. Here we have the hoses going to it that have been safety wired. So have these blanking fittings and the case. All of these applications are to stop the bolts or the pipes coming undone. Here is another example of a vacuum pump and the end case are all wire locked as well as a couple of the blanking plugs. I have an example here that we're going to use to practice some wire locking techniques later in this video. Good set of side cutters, make sure they're sharp, cutting the wire. These duck wheel pliers have actually had their faces ground smooth so they don't mar the wire when you're pulling it through. But a pair of duck wheel pliers can be helpful. A pair of needle nose pliers, sometimes it's good to get into tight spaces and these are very helpful for that. And as I talked about earlier, we have two types of wire locking pliers. <clears throat> One of the beauties about these is that you can grip the wire and lock it. It's a bit hard to demonstrate but you pull and you twist and then the wire is locked into the pliers. Then they have this handle on the end that as you pull it, it spins. And this is one of the ways that you can achieve the twist on the wire. These pliers have a knurled surface in the jaw to grab, grab, grip the wire. This can be problematic, it can mar the wire. But on simple tasks these pliers are very good. These are probably um, the best pliers that you can get. They have um, wave jaws, so they don't mar the wire. Um, they can change direction, so you can pull, you can go left and right, and they will lock in a single action of your hand. So you can, so it's very simple. When you're doing a job, you can just do a squeeze and they locked, and then another squeeze and they come undone. When we choose the size of wire and the type of wire, there's a few considerations. What does the manual say? What are the sizes of the bolts we're using? Uh, what application is it? Is it under extreme heat? Or is it is in a normal application? These are some of the considerations to think about. So here we have another example of some wire locking. This is inside a PT6 engine. And this application, on this side, I'd say the wiring's a little bit loose. That's about seven turns per inch. On the other side, it's probably a little bit tight. That's about 12 turns per inch. Um, this is also, um, because it's inside an engine, it uses a different type of wire. This is an Inconel wire rather than a stainless steel wire. But as you see over here, they've left the tail a little bit loose where you could kind of catch yourself. Okay, I'm gonna cut the wire off, this, um, off these bolts. And we're gonna have a look at doing some wire locking for real, okay? So, we'll cut off this wire. One thing to be aware of is that we don't want to have FOD. We don't want to induce FOD into our aircraft. So these little pieces of wire, we want to keep them and throw them in the dustbin so they don't get ingested inside an engine. One other thing to be aware of is that these bolts, they, in, a, in a real life situation, they would be torqued. So you would make sure they're tight, okay, for the application that they're being used for, all right? I often have a spanner in place because I sometimes forget lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. I want to know which way is tightening so that I know which way the wire is going to flow. So often good to have a spanner with you. So I'm going to use 32, thou, 32 thousandths of thickness stainless steel wire for this job. So it's always good just to get a bit more than you think you might need because it's, it's, it's always very annoying when you um, come to the end of the job and you run out of wire. I'm now going to demonstrate how to wire lock these three bolts together. So to start with, we thread a wire through the first bolt head to about halfway along the wire. We're now going to pass 
the first wire around the back of the bolt head and underneath the wire that goes through the bolt head. This is just to stop it coming off the back of the bolt. Now, I often do a couple of turns by hand just to start the process off. Once I've done that, I'm gonna pull it round to the next bolt and where the hole is and just put a little nick with my finger. This helps us to know where to grab the wire with the pliers. Now, I'm gonna twist the wire for aiming for eight to 10 turns per inch. So once we've done that, we're gonna see which wire is the best wire to go through the um, bolt head of the next bolt and place that through. Now we can pull that tight. And start the next. So we'll pass the wire around and again take maybe just a couple of turns by hand to start it off. And now we're going to pull this around to the next hole on the last bolt. Put a little nick in it with my thumb, grab it with the pliers and again we're aiming for eight to ten turns per inch. And now we're going to thread it through the last hole to finish the job off. So we thread it through, pull it tight, bring the, the wire around the back of the bolt head, do a couple of turns to start us off. We finish off normally with about an inch and a half of wire. So we tighten that up. Now, you cut yourself your tail. And the very last thing we do is make sure that this is not left like that, because they're incredibly sharp and can easily cut yourself. So we take the wire and we're gonna bend it up underneath the job so that no one is gonna hurt themselves. As we come to the end of this short training and wire locking, this is really just the beginning of using these techniques in lots of different applications in aviation. So go ahead and practice, as practice makes perfect.